Hello, and welcome to St. James Episcopal Church on this celebration of Trinity Sunday. Today, we are also celebrating Milestone Sunday, and so many milestones as people wrap up the school year and move on to new adventures. Thanks to everyone who shared their milestones with us. I'm the Reverend Eileen O'Brien, Rector of St. James here in Austin, and our preacher today is the Reverend Robbie Vickery, assisting clergy here. I would like to extend a special welcome to anyone who's worshiping with us from home for the first time today. We are so glad that your spiritual journey has brought you to this place to sing and to reflect and to pray with us. If you would like to get more connected to the St. James community, just go to our webpage, homepage, stjamesaustin.org and fill out the online welcome form there. We'll be in touch with you. More announcements will follow the closing hymn. We'll be talking about the big return of the evening service at 5 p.m. next Sunday, summer fun and learning, etc. But for now, prepare yourselves for worship. Grab your bulletin from the Worship Online page of the website and sing and pray with us today. Welcome to St. James. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome at this table.
blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, and each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs, flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I send me the word of the lord thanks be to god ascribe to the lord your gods ascribe to the lord glory and strength 
Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe? if I tell you about heavenly things. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A priest friend posted on Facebook this week a modification of one panel from a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon. In this one panel, the boy Calvin is facing a blackboard. All one sees is his back. You need to understand that Calvin frequently escapes from schoolwork by daydreaming that he is a spaceman exploring alien worlds and overcoming great danger. In the panel, Calvin, facing the blackboard, has the thought bubble staring death in the face our hero thinks fast. On the blackboard is simply written, Final Exam, colon, Explain the Trinity. Relax.
I'm not going to try to explain the Trinity in this sermon. Other than to say that one God in three persons is not about mathematics, but rather about imagination. Imagining one God with a unified relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I struggle to understand the Trinity. Some ancient Greek Christian teachers used the term perichoresis to talk about the relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Perichoresis literally means dance around that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit dance around with each other. Some of you uh, who have perhaps watched me closely in worship may have noticed that when we sing songs that involve rhythmic clapping, I struggle to stay on rhythm. I have a poor sense of rhythm. And... Maybe this explains why I struggle with understanding the Trinity. I sort of get God as Father. I am a Father. I had a Father. I sort of get God as Son. I am a son. I have three sons. It's the Holy Spirit that I really struggle with. Like a lot of Episcopalians. So let's look more closely at the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to get into this by what may seem a strange way. I'm going to tell you how I delight in my granddaughter. After four generations and 10 consecutive males being born in my line, we finally got a little girl. Ruthie is now 13 months old old, and I delight in her. When she puts up her little arms, uh, holds them up uh, as a sign she wants me to pick her up, I delight in her. When she moves her arms and feet and dances to Pharrell Williams' song, Happy, I delight in her. And it's obvious that she did not get her dancing ability from me. When she rests her head on my shoulder, I melt into her. Even when I change her diaper, or when she yanks my hair uh, as she's exploring it, I delight in her. The Sunday morning adult forum just finished Rowan Williams' book, Being Disciple. In his chapter 
on holiness. He stressed how much God delights in you and me. This really struck me. God delights in you and me even more than I delight in Ruthie. Yes, I've understood with my head and some with my heart that God loves me. But I've never really been struck by the fact, which I think is biblical, that as part of that love, God delights in you and me. The Father delights in his children. Notice what Paul says in our epistle from Romans today. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, and I think Daddy is a better translation of Abba. It is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, the Son. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The God of the Trinity sends the Holy Spirit into us to lead us as adopted children to join in the dance with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God delights in dancing with you and me. Some Christians think that because we get to dance with the Trinity <coughs> as heirs of the kingdom of God, we are hot stuff. Better than thou. And like too many heirs of privilege, they become spoiled. But look at this inheritance carefully. God delights in all his creatures. God delights in you and me. But he also delights in the likes of Donald Trump. He even delights in the likes of murderers like Derek Chauvin and Vladimir Putin. And God is calling God's children, including you and me, in the power of the Holy Spirit to take this good news to all in whom God delights. This is not an easy calling. 
remember how our epistle ends. Children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Suffering is part of it. Being this spirit-led child in whom God delights is not so much about power and privilege as it is about being suffering witnesses to the coming kingdom of God. So let us delight in the truth that God delights in you and me and calls us to share this good news of God's delighting in his creation with the whole world. God help us. God will help us. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a perfect unity of love, you have created us, redeemed us, and you sustain us even now. We come to you with confidence and trust. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord, eternal God. You are with us always, even to the end of the age. Bless the church and this community of St. James. Draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love so that we may draw others to you making disciples of all nations. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Eternal God, in the beginning you spoke the world into being. Continue to keep it under your care. Make us stewards of the earth, accepting creation as your wondrous gift and working to preserve its beauty. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Eternal God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Empower our elected leaders and all who hold worldly power to nurture the well-being, health, and dignity of all people. Let them be a light among the nations. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Eternal God, in you we live and move and have our being. Help those who are sick, suffering, or in any need. Grant them endurance and hope, finding comfort in you. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Eternal God, you alone are the source of life and health. Give your power of healing to those who minister to the sick and the injured. Protect those who supply us with food, medicine, and the other necessities of life. Grant that your spirit of dedication and perseverance may manifest in them 
will ever inspire compassion and change in the world. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. For whom shall we pray? You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. God is our refuge and our strength. Whom shall we remember and not forget? You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. God is merciful and generous. For what are we thankful today? You are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Eternal God, you are indeed good and gracious. You have made us in your image. You have brought us truth and love. You have made us holy. Keep us steadfast in the way of faith, hope, and love. Open our lives to reveal you. Open our hearts to praise you. For you are worthy of praise. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. This Memorial Day weekend, we offer prayers for the fallen and prayers for peace. Let us pray. O God, we ask your strength that we might dedicate ourselves to the perfecting of your kingdom of peace and justice among nations. Let us give thanks for the many blessings of freedom to which we lay claim, purchased at the cost of many lives and sacrifices. Fill us with courage to fulfill our task to share our freedoms in ways that lead to equity and justice and peace among the nations and in no way break faith with the fallen. We commend these fallen to your mercy and ask that you give them eternal rest. Draw near to all who mourn the loss of those near and dear to them. In the midst of their deep sorrow, grant them the comfort of your presence. This we ask and pray in your name. Amen. And let us pray for peace. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, that we may walk the paths of the Most High, and we shall beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And none shall be afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Our spirits yearn for peace, O Lord, May your spirit break upon this world and change the face of the earth. Amen. We also give thanks for all of the blessings of this life, for all celebrating the milestones of graduations, retirements, awards won, and advancement in learning. We give you thanks, O oh God. If you didn't get a chance to see the milestone slideshow, click through the e-newsletter item. And today we pray for those celebrating birthdays in the week to come. For Brianna Burns, Liz Jones Dilworth, Susan Joyner, Nina Simone Elias, Mary Arnold, and Harrison Epright. Let's pray for them. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, you are indeed good and gracious. You have made us in your image. You have brought us truth and love. You have made us holy. Keep us steadfast in the way of faith, hope, and love. Open our lives to 
to reveal you. Open our hearts to praise you, for you are worthy of praise. Glory to you, O Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks to you for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food through your word. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone, love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. for worshiping with St. James today. Today will be our last 530 Zoom church session because we are bringing the evening service back in person at 5 p.m. Not 530 like in pre-COVID days, but at 5 p.m. next Sunday, June 6th. As of June 6th, we will have a full in-person worship schedule on Sundays, 8, 1030, 1 o'clock, and 5 but we will still be offering the option of online worship services in English and in Spanish. So don't fret if you're not quite ready to return in person. The Sunday morning forum at 9 a.m. will also be back next week with a summer study of the book of Genesis using the Reverend Dr. Judy Fentress Williams's new book, Holy Imagination, as a touchstone text. I have long been waiting to use this new book to study scripture with you all, and Father Robbie and Reverend Rohani are just as excited as I am. I hope you'll join us. It is the end of May, which means that we're hoping that you will consider where you are with your pledge or your financial commitment to the community of St. James. But I'm going to let Susie Stecky take the microphone here. Hello, my name is Susie Stecky. My husband Tom and I are 25 year members of St. James and I am currently serving on the vestry. 
Father Richard Rohr talks about our spiritual journey involving moving from a focus on the small I, our individual lives, hopes, and grief, and longings, to a focus on the universal I, the radically welcoming and inclusive fellowship of Christ. St. James offers me the invitation and the opportunity to move into that universal oneness with each of you, and therefore with Christ. The quiet fellowship of our 8 a.m. right one service, the reassurance of Thursday night evening prayer on Zoom, the growth and challenge offered by the Education for Ministry program, the joy of packing food for distribution by neighbor to neighbor, our connection to Norman Sims Elementary School, our singing of Lift Every Voice and Sing, the comfort of seeing so many St. James faces at the viewings for beloved members of our congregation that we have lost. All of these beloved elements of St. James help lay down the pathway into the universal eye for me. I am so very grateful for St. James and honored to be able to support the church with my time, my talents, and my treasure. I invite you to join me in continuing to build pathways into the universal eye. St. James, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.